Hello and welcome to your Urban Connection. Remember, this is the channel that is often imitated, but is never duplicated. Now today I want to talk with you about uh, the Supreme Court and a particular Supreme Court justice. And that justice is one of the most conservative of the uh, current justices in the United States Supreme Court. And his name is none other than, you guessed it, Clarence Thomas. Now Clarence Thomas, during his time on the bench, has been involved in several different scandals. And he's been taken to task, not only for his scandals, but for his voting record. As you'll recall, Clarence Thomas even though he is a black justice, has voted against basically everything that would be favorable to black communities and black constituents throughout the United States. Let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, Clarence Thomas was opposed to affirmative action, even though he was a benefactor of affirmative action. Clarence Thomas was opposed to the Voting Rights Act, okay? Clarence Thomas was opposed to the Roe v. Wade, and he was one of the leading proponents to undermine and do away with Roe v. Wade. But this latest thing that Clarence Thomas, or I should say, not thing, this latest scandal that Clarence Thomas in is one that takes the cake and one that I think probably nobody expected, unless you really knew Clarence Thomas. And it involves Clarence Thomas' appointment or hiring of his newest law clerk. Well, you might say, well, what's the matter with that? All of them hire law clerks. You're right. They all hire four law clerks during these, each term. But what makes this hire stand out and involve it in a major scandal is that Clarence Thomas hired a young 29-year-old conservative female who was white, no problem with that. However, this 29-year-old law clerk that Clarence Thomas just hired has a history of being a full-blown, all-out racist. That's right. She has a history of being a full-blown, all-out racist. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. You know, this hire First of all, let me just say this. There is a clause uh, uh, that is usually honored among justices that says you do not hire uh, members of your family. In other words, you do not hire, make a hire showing favoritism, nepotism, and uh, anything that would put you in uh, a bad light Okay, and this certainly does fit that mold. Now, let me tell you why I say that. You see, this young woman is referred to by Clarence Thomas and his wife as their quote unquote nearly adopted daughter. Now, well, you say, what does that mean? Well, this 29 year old in her early 20s was living with Justice Thomas and his wife. That's right. Not only that, she worked for Clarence Thomas's wife's consulting firm. Okay. Uh, so this would place her in the position of being as close as you can get to nepotism. This 
is a hire that never should have been made. But let's look at it from another standpoint. Let's look at the racist abortions. Now, this woman in her college days was a member of Turning Point USA. And if you've never heard of Turning Point USA, that is an organization that was founded by one of the biggest racist white males in the United States by the name of Charlie Kirk. Now, Charlie Kirk goes around the college communities and, and profounds all of these racist statements. Now, he's a matter of fact, let me tell you, Charlie Kirk is the one guy who here about a month or two ago said that if he was on an airplane and discovered that it had a black pilot, he would be very, very nervous and uncomfortable. Okay? Charlie Kirk is one of those guys who doesn't believe in DEI. All right? Charlie Kirk is an avowed, admitted racist. Now, this hire, whose name is Crystal Clanton, by the way, Crystal Clanton was a member of Turning Point USA, one of the most racist uh, uh, groups in the country. But she was found to be so racist that she was fired and kicked out of Turning Point USA. Now, that should say everything you need to know about this woman's past. As a matter of fact, she has been on, on, on she's been known to have passed text messages to various people stating her hatred for black people. That's right. Her hatred for black people. Now, that should disqualify this woman from being anywhere near the United States Supreme Court. Not a clerk, not a justice, nothing. But you know what? She fits her thoughts and her attitudes fits right in with Clarence Thomas. Because you see, Clarence Thomas hates black people too. <laughs> okay? Matter of fact, Clarence Thomas hates even being black. Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen anyone who is black African-American, whatever, singing the praises of Clarence Thomas? Have you ever seen anybody in the presence of Clarence Thomas at a civic event, at a fun, fun event, whatever, with Clarence Thomas? Have you ever seen photos of Clarence Thomas with any African-American friends no. You see, Clarence Thomas doesn't consider himself to be black. Now, he's black on the outside. Don't get me wrong. He cannot, there's no way he can get away from that. All right? But that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it goes. You see, Clarence Thomas does not have any black friends, no black associates, none of it. Clarence Thomas doesn't want to be black. He hates being black. See, you see, here's why I say this, too. Clarence Thomas is on record saying he would never hire a clerk that did not agree with him, that does not feel the way he feels. So this woman says, I hate blacks. And Clarence Thomas hires her. What does that tell you? Okay? Now, the problem with this is that uh, when you have someone that is an avowed racist, okay, that has continued to say, text, and appear on broadcast, whatever, and state her disdain for and her hatred for Black people. It makes you wonder, cannot Clarence Thomas find a law clerk that doesn't espouse these kinds of positions or attitudes? Certainly could, but he doesn't want to. You see, he doesn't want to. This is who he appeals to. This is who 
he feels comfortable with. And so that's why he's hired him. Here's the deal. See, once these people are hired as law clerks, they are given a $500,000 bonus. Okay? 500000 You heard me right. Half a million dollars. Okay? To enroll in one of these conservative law schools. Okay? And then what happens is they're in a position to then go into law, practice law, be mentored by a Supreme Court justice and put themselves in a position where there is a Republican president, they're in a position, a perfect position, they've aligned themselves with the right people that they can be nominated and appointed to the federal bench and at some point in the future, elevated to the United States Supreme Court. Because there again, ladies and gentlemen, it's like everything else in America. It's not what you know. It's who you know. And these people are basically among the Federalist Society that basically promotes and nominates, put up the nomination, a lot of these conservative right-wing lying nominees for the Supreme Court and for federal courts. And a lot of them are not even qualified. But it's not what you know, it's who you know. So therefore, Clarence Thomas, who lately for the last few years has found himself going out of one scandal right into another scandal. Clarence Thomas has found himself to be one of the most corrupt, and I'll say it again, one of the most corrupt Supreme Court justices of all time. He's broken the record. Everything he's done. And I want to say this. It's time for Clarence Thomas to go. Now, let me be sure, Clarence Thomas is not the only corrupt Supreme Court justice that we're faced with today, but he is the most, by a long shot, the most corrupt Supreme Court justice that we're confronted with. It's time for him to go. Okay? Now, here's what I'm going to say. When this 2024 election is over, should Joe Biden succeed? Should Joe Biden succeed? I'm sure that Clarence Thomas and maybe one or two others will be willing to leave the court. And look at look, look how long Clarence Thomas has been there. Look at his age. He's holding on right now, hoping that Donald Trump or some other Republican, Republican will be elected. And then he would willingly step down. But I think he cannot sustain another four years if, in particular, a Democrat is elected in 2024. So I hope that Joe Biden will start talking about this is one of the things that bothers me about the Democrats. They go through election after election after election, and they never, ever talk about the Supreme Court justices and how influential and how the Supreme Court can make decisions that go against the best interests of its citizens. And these guys are on that bench for a lifetime, and these positions that they take affect you for a very long period of time. Let's, for an example, the Roe v. Wade. Now, most of these guys lied at their, during their nomination process when they stated that, as far as they were concerned, Roe v. Wade was an established position. They weren't going to touch it. 
They lied through their teeth. They knew better when they said that. Okay? So, I mean, voting like that. This is another thing. And Clarence Thomas knows what the hell he was doing. Affirmative action. Clarence Thomas knows what the hell he was doing. DEI. Clarence Thomas is against DEI. Anything that will level the playing field for blacks in America, Clarence Thomas is against. But this takes the cake, ladies and gentlemen, for Clarence Thomas to go out there and hire one of the most racist females in America today to be his law clerk. That takes the cake. Okay? But we shouldn't be surprised because, after all, we're talking about Clarence Thomas. Okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's my show for today. And uh, I'll see you again next time with another edition of Your Urban Connection. Take care.